Uh, one of the uh, the notable uh, personas or gimmicks that, that you ended up uh, adopting that we wanted to get the story on was that of Doink. But before um, you explain that one, what was your experience like working with the the late um, great wrestler Matt Bourne? Matt, I never problem with Matt. I, I, most of those guys I didn't have a problem with because they knew what I was there for, and they also knew I had a little bit of talent. I mean, I wasn't going to ever be considered. I don't know that I would ever be considered a great worker, but they knew I was more than capable, and I could have a twenty-minute match, an hour match, or a thirty-second match, and, and that helped me with a guy like Matt, who was a little, little hot-headed. Um, I only worked with him a handful of times. I never had a problem. Nothing. Uh, and that's another one. You hear the stories and you shake your head because your dealings with the person is completely different than the stories you're hearing. And you know the stories are true because of the way everything plays out. And it just kind of disappoints. Um, but yeah, I ended up with the gimmick after I left pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. So, Did you enjoy that? Huh? Did you enjoy uh, that being somewhat of a, a radical departure from your, your usual presentation in the ring? I've lengthened my career, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, because uh, things became easier. I don't know. I I looked at it then as a payday. I still look back at it as, as a payday. Uh, it was business to me. When people are saying, can you do this? Yeah, Vince never said anything to me. In fact, he sent word to me through Percy Pringle with just don't do anything stupid in, in the gimmick. Don't get arrested in the gimmick. Don't do TV with the gimmick. And he, he'll never say a word to you. He shuts other people down. He's never going to say a word to you. And so I didn't. I made sure that if I was doing anything stupid, I wasn't in the gimmick. Or uh, I didn't do TV with the gimmick. You know, people may have filmed, but I wasn't doing a TV. And then I'm doing a promo. I'm, I'm, that sort of thing. And it was business for me. It's quite simply, it was just transactional. I, Made made some matches, made quite a few matches easier. Yeah, one hundred percent on that part. Uh, yeah, I, it's one of those things. It's the, I don't have huge memory of happiness or whatever because of this gimmick or that gimmick. And I learned early on it was about my payday. You know, I went from being that kid that you know I'm, I'm a fan. Well, I was I'm still a fan of the older school. I am. I don't understand what they're doing today, but uh, I went from being a, a fan, I was, uh, to a, a mild-eyed kid that had no real idea what was going on, to real quickly, I could make a living doing this, and if I treat it like a living, I'm better off. Mm -hmm. And I, I can be a fan at a certain point in time, but that moment ends, it's time to do business. And I've always been that, even with memories, you know, the, the good ones and the bad ones. It was just my nature. Mm -hmm. How did that conversation come about, Dusty, that you were allowed to then use that character outside the organization? Did that you was, have to, like, there was no conversation up front. Uh, I just did it. Oh, it was uh, your idea? Yeah, well, no, yeah. it was the promoter in South Africa. He says, I heard you actually put the, the outfit on once or twice in the house show, and they said they needed to, you know, run in, run around the ring, and leave or whatever, you know, that sort of thing. I said, well, yeah, but I don't have the outfit. You know, they carried the outfit on the truck, and they had makeup people. I don't have any of that. And he says, I got it. I'll get it. Don't worry. It was the promoter in South Africa. And so I'm okay. And I've, in my mind, if Vince heard about it, the worst he's going to do is tell me don't do it again. And it's certainly not going to take my payday away from me. So when I came back from South Africa, I didn't even, I still didn't even have the gimmick. I had to get it made as far as the outfit. A uh, couple of people picked up the phone. We heard you did it in Africa. I'm, yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, fixing to get the cease and desist or whatever. Can you do it for us? I guess. And it just snowballed from there. And then, like I say, you know, about a year. I've been there about a year when I saw Percy down in uh, New Orleans. He came, he lived about an hour away outside of Mobile. And he came over to visit and he said, they know what you're doing. They know all about it. 
And I said, well, I figured that. The defense knew everything. At least at one time he did. He knew everything that was going on. And uh, what about it? He says, that's when he gave me the message. You know, they, they knew I was going to see you this weekend. And just don't get arrested in the gimmick. Don't get arrested with the gimmick in your bag. You know, don't, don't let the press. Don't do anything stupid. And, and, and more importantly, don't be on somebody's TV. Yeah. But as far as these shows go, he could care less. Make your money. He's not hiring you. You know, it was a little gift, a little, I guess it was a little thank you to me, maybe, yeah. or an acknowledgement of something, maybe, or maybe it just wasn't important enough. I don't know. <laughs>